Next up is myself. I'm going to talk to you about the Climate Economy Education Inc. and the new Climate Economy Action Network. I'm going to share my screen. Everybody hearing me okay? Yep. All right, thanks. Okay, here we go. I'm just gonna give a little bit of information, um, background about um, the nonprofit. Oops, this is at the end, sorry. Can everybody see that? Okay, perfect. Okay, so the Climate Economy Action Network. Um, this is um, sort of like an incubation um, platform, but not exactly because incubation is a whole animal of its own. And what we're doing is, is trying to help incubate ideas um, and everybody's ideas um, from, you know, a person who just um, wants to help out in their neighborhood to a person who wants to start a new venture in the community. So just in case um, someone's not familiar with the Climate Economy Education Inc., this is our mission. Um, basically, we're trying to educate people about business models, related science, and lifestyle ideas that are good for the climate, the economy, and humanity. So there's infinite ideas and opportunities out there, and we wanna create our future with a world in balance. And so this Climate Economy Action Network is a place where we're gonna hopefully bring ideas to people as well as bring people to the ideas. And also you can connect um, with other people across the globe with like interests. I mean, we all know, we all know this, the next 10 years are crucial. We have to get to a 45% decline by 2030 and a net zero by 2050. <clears throat> we did pretty good last year. We, well, not really, but we kept it flat at least. Um, by closing a bunch of, of coal power plants. And this is what um, energy companies out there are thinking that is gonna happen, that they're just gonna keep producing um, like, like they have. And uh, obviously this will cause cumulative emissions to rise to unsustainable levels. What we actually have to do is get to zero. So, down here to zero emissions. And the later we start, the harder it's gonna to be to do that. Okay, we know the sources, electricity and heat production, agriculture, land use, buildings, transport, industry, other energy. I mean, basically everything we do has to be changed a little bit or a lot um, in order to have a society and an economy without um, emissions that are gonna cause all these problems. So right now, in this point in time, what we're trying to get across to people, you know, we have a choice to make in everything we do. So, you know, we're choosing either scenario one or scenario two because it's actually our choices that are gonna make the difference here. So scenario one, this was uh, out of a, a, you know, a big business organization, but also every single scientist out there basically at this point. I mean, there's pretty much 100% consensus on all this stuff. NASA, the Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change, all these things. You know, we know what's going to happen around here. We're going to have extreme heat, heavy downpours, and flooding. And also, we're kind of a rural area, <laughs> just slightly. So um, we all, we have other challenges related to that as well, because we're kind of spread out and possibly less organized. Um, we also have this rif risk of climate apartheid. So, um, you know, the rich will be okay and the rest of us will suffer and fight for the things that we need. And there's a really good fiction book uh, just about that. It's Octavia Butler's book there, it's really good. And then we have compound extremes, of course. Um, they're just gonna keep piling on top of each other. Um, 
So obviously everyone here is probably aware of these things and, <laughs> and these tipping points. We definitely don't wanna hit these tipping points because once we do, we just, we just don't know what's gonna happen. So this is our um, scenario two. This is where uh, the climate economy comes in. So we go from, we, we tear down the old way of doing things. And this is, um, this is everything that we're gonna be doing with, with this educational, the educational programs at the climate economy, tearing down the old way of doing things and building up the new ways. So getting rid of you know, energy from fossil fuels, going with clean energy, um, all these things over here um, that we can just do better at. And, <clears throat> we can improve and and do things in a better way and um, not hurt the environment, not hurt people, and and still have a good functional economy. So, I mean, the climate economy's focus obviously is keeping the economy going, but without hurting anyone or anything. Um, it's been well documented that there's huge benefits from doing this. We're going to have better health, um, you know, cleaner air. Uh, just, you know, better animal, you know, for the animals in the oceans, um, everything. It's just, it's, it's a, w it's seriously a win, win, win situation. And it's also great for the economy. We, we have tons of economic activity. Um, and we also have millions of new jobs just in clean energy alone. We'll have a net gain of 11.6 million jobs. And also we're hoping to get women playing a critical role in this because women are on the front lines of, of all of this activity. Obviously, we're gonna have better human health. We're gonna have better community resilience. We'll help to eliminate violence against women. And we're doing this for future generations, of course. I mean, the health and wellness of future generations is intimately tied to the health of the planet. So this is what we're working on this second scenario. So this is what it looks like. So in the climate economy, we have all these great things. You know, we're more connected to nature, cleaner air and water, um, clean energy, more sustainable food supply, well-paying jobs, better youth engagement, less waste, healthy soil, <clears throat> locally sourced food and necessities, appreciation of indigenous peoples, climate justice for society's most vulnerable groups, People who choose to put their passions to work for the betterment of society and cohesive, cooperative, resilient communities. So that is the end goal. That's what we're shooting for. So at the Climate Economy, we have a three-step program because we feel that um, something like ignorance that is the cause of a lot of our problems, people need to have a recovery program for that. <laughs> so we came up with a three-step program First, to understand your needs and impact, um, you know, understand your carbon footprint, reduce your impact. Um, of course, you have to be healthy in yourself first. Also, you have to um, know your own health. And then number two is be a star in the climate economy um, where, you know, we're going we're gonna to have business models and lifestyles that are good for the climate, good for the economy, and good for humanity. And then number three, <clears throat> share and participate. So we're building our communities and, and all kinds of things and we're getting more people involved. So um, now I'm gonna run to the actual Climate Economy Action Network, which I hope is gonna be able to help us with these three steps. So does everybody still see my screen? All right. So this is the Climate Economy Action Network. It's at clean.ideagist.com. I've done quite a bit of research trying to look around for a proper sort of platform that we could use to, um, <clears throat> you know, to bring people together, <clears throat> to let people put their ideas up, and to keep things moving. We don't want to um, have this event today and then just everything kind of stagnates. Nobody knows what's going on. So that's what this is for. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is just the front page um, that everybody will see when, when you go to this. And it talks about, you know, what we're doing and why, um, you know, basically we're just starting a journey here. Everything on this is new. There's hardly anybody on here yet. 
but hopefully that will change soon. And then, you know, making the benefits of the climate economy clear. We have climate wins, we have economic wins, and we have human wins. And we're not sacrificing any of those things in order to, you know, to achieve the other. So I'm going to log in. So this is <clears throat> my homepage, it's my profile. So um, I can enter information about myself, including um, my profile summary, my picture, um, the things I, what I wanna call myself. Everybody can play whatever role they want to on here. Um, you can be a mentor, you can, be an innovator like myself, just trying to help with ideas and stuff. Um, you can be an entrepreneur with ideas who's, who's uh, got a specific project you wanna work on. Um, just thinking about the future, you could be a freelancer, any of these things here, job seeker also. You, you, know, you can add all your um, individual information. You can connect to other people um, over here. These are, Let's see, I'll look at recent connections. This is um, Nelson Fernandez, he's here in town. He's one of my connections already. Um, we can look at, let's see, people in my city. This is some additional people, Adam Holbrook, he's also a student at SIU. Um, some people from outside of the network are showing up, but they're just people who are local. And then, so we can look at people, and we can also look at um, companies. So if we go into the ecosystem here, so I've added my own companies here, and we've got also um, another company that's been added by Grant and Jacob, I believe, the Passel Environmental Foundation. Um, so there's a lot of things we can do here. We can, all, we can all connect on here, we can make connections, we can set up our profile, let people know what we're interested in um, and things like that. And then, but the most interesting thing here is obviously gonna be the idea part of it. So this is just my idea. I've only added a couple ideas. Um, so we'll look at those in a second, but you can also browse all ideas and I've added the categories here um, that are on our survey that's on our website, which is trying to get an idea of what's going on in communities and um, what these communities are interested in and what they're gonna be able to do based on their particular community, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So we have all these different um, categories, just transitions, big data, electric vehicles, Climate finance, that's a huge one. Education and entrepreneurship, fashion, literature, art, food, farming, food waste, energy, health, recreation, and tourism, natural climate solutions, smart buildings and energy efficiency, waste utilization and the circular economy, water management, and then we have youth climate economy ventures, which is a program <clears throat> that I'm doing with the Boys and Girls Club. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm not used to talking so much these days. So obviously we are short some ideas. So that's what I'm gonna show you next. So if you're, I'll show you my ideas first and how you go in there and, um, so this is an idea for a local carbon network. So we can view that idea. Everybody still good out there? All right. Okay, so we've got our idea description. Um, and for each idea, we have this progression that we go through. And so this will be nice for people that are kind of new to starting things, starting any sort of venture. It's kind of good to have a little bit of a checklist that you can look at. 
Um, you can, this can be, you know, for any sort of venture that we're talking about, it could just be a community project, it could be a new business, it could be a new nonprofit organization. So for example, I go into my step one here. We've got an introduction. It's telling me about what we're going to do here, what we're going to learn. And this is already set up by the people that built this incubator and it's being used all over the world in every country they tell me and we can also add specific things um, to certain steps of the process so like for the climate economy we'll probably want to add in um, our climate venture map and things where we're teaching people how to you know envision their venture what they want the future to look like and then um, back casting to look at what they want to build and how to build it and things like that so we will be adding some some parts to this process but for now this is it's already amazingly comprehensive so let's say we mark this step complete. And so now we're gonna to go to the next search or the next step in the process. So, so this whole thing will take you through your idea as far as you wanna take it basically. And you can use these steps. I mean, for think here, there's multiple steps starting from setting up where you're gonna store your documents, defining your opportunity, your opportunity screen. Are you an entrepreneur talking about what it means to, um, to run a project? Um, and, and this could also just be for people that, like I said, just wanna participate. They don't necessarily have to start a whole venture, but um, they might be able to have an idea about something that they wanna contribute. And it would still be helpful probably to go through a lot of these um, these steps and just so people get familiar with that. So um, that's what it looks like when it's done. Now, if I wanna go in and edit my idea, when you start an idea, one of the great things about this is that you can keep your idea private. So if you're still working on it, still getting it set up, things like that, um, you can, share it with just certain people that you want to share it with. Maybe you have a, a small team that you're working with. And then also you can make it public and just share it with everybody. So you add your information. They, they have a helpful way of doing this here. They have, you know, it's kind of some easy questions for you to answer. Um, you don't have to figure everything out right at the beginning. You know, this is kind of just, uh, what I've done here is just, an idea and where I got the idea basically and what I think, you know, should happen with it. I mean, I can help our community, you know, I don't, I don't have to come up with the whole solution right now, but this is the beginning of it. And so, you know, you can add um, your idea categories, which um, we already went over all those and then um, your idea outcomes. So what you think would potentially come out of this, Product. So what I put here was an engineered product. Maybe we're engineering some biochar um, for this local carbon network that's infused with, um, you know, food compost and, and all kinds of good stuff. So, um, and then we have uh, just, you know, sprucing up how your, your stuff looks. So anyway, once you have your idea like that, normally when you add a new idea, you also put out there what your needs are. So my idea needs, um, what kind of help do I need with my idea as well as my achievements so far. So for your particular idea, you can keep track of, of what kind of thing you need. And a lot of these things are very um, business or company focused, but it's probably, I, I think it's still useful for, um, for people to work on projects and to kind of just get that mindset of, of completing things in a certain way to, to reach success. So um, another thing that's nice about this is, is you can put um, help wanted ads out there. So if you need, for example, some feedback on an idea, you can go out there and, um, you know, whatever idea you have, um, what kind of feedback you want. Um, um, and you can offer points, and I'm gonna talk about that here in a second. 
And so just for everything that, that you do on here, um, it's, all, it's all put together so that you can just hatch an idea, find the people that you wanna work with on it and figure out how to make it work. We don't have to be at a point in time where we have to have the answer ready, but we, we wanna get all those good ideas out there for each community and each person that has, has an idea so that they can share it. So, um, let's see. Oh, I wanted to, to show everybody about the rewards here. So um, we, can, we can use this system to give people points and rewards. So just for adding your profile picture or profile summary, you get points. And then what you can do with those points is you can purchase services or advice or something from other people. So if you, if you wanna get feedback, you're, you might have a better chance of getting a response if you can offer some points, for example. Um, you can also connect social media accounts and start an idea to get more points and to get more friends to join. And I'm, I'm working with the, the developers on this platform and we're hopefully gonna be adding more ways to get rewards that would be associated with getting people to do things that will reduce emissions. Um, see okay so I mean the point of all this you know is to grow our community group to keep it meeting and on track and to create the future of our community that's good for the climate economy and humanity so um, what we can do now you can sign yourself up so this is that call to action part of all these these meetings, I guess. I'm gonna escape out of here. So, I mean, sign up yourself, especially our presenters today um, and all the attendees as well. It'd be great if everybody could get signed up um, so you can start to uh, look at what's going on in this idea space, I guess we could call it. Um, idea ecosystem, I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure something fun to call it. Um, we just wanna keep people informed. We wanna post events, put together plans and help draw out more ideas. And um, we can also hopefully have everybody explore the categories. I have links in all the categories that link back to the Climate Economy website, which has blog posts about all the related topic areas, categories. Um, also, as other people have been mentioning, make sure you talk to this, um, talk to people about this that you know, try to get other people involved, um, maybe a number of someone's, and try to get them also to sign up and post an idea or two. Um, so hopefully we'll get this rolling. I'm gonna try to figure out some ways to, uh, to build the community, but if we can already get some, some people from this meeting here today on there, then we should be able to get it rolling. And um, so I don't know, I just think this looks to me like a lot of fun. It looks like it could be very educational as well. And I think hopefully we'll all be better off for it. And I don't wanna get people on there. Um, I don't expect people to use the technology all the time. And, and you know, I'm not trying to get people to solve the climate crisis with this technology, but I think this will be a good tool to help us um, advance projects in our community and keep them going. So um, that's really all I've got. Um, does anybody have any questions? Does the climate economy help arrange group meetings or is that left up to the individuals that have weighed in on a specific idea? Jane, do you wanna just ask me? Wait, I can't hear you yet. You, you held the climate economy meeting, was it last summer or the summer before? Yeah, here, and you're gonna do one, I believe, in Metro East coming up, although maybe that's gotta be virtual too, I would 
perhaps. Um, yeah, we're doing a, a kickoff event for the Metro East. Right, 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 right. Like we did in Carbondale, it was supposed to be a big full day event and um, with presenters and stuff, but it's actually still going to be pretty awesome. We've got um, L, L. Hunter Lovins is going to be um, one of our speakers mm -hmm. and as well as um, Christine, Dr. Christine Lang from the Rodale Institute. And it's going to oh. be about um, local food and farming. Okay. We're going to have a panel discussion and some <coughs> talks. So, and that's May 13th. Yeah. Um, but they're also going to be getting on the Climate Economy Action Network. And the great thing about the net, the platform is that it's geographically focused. And my nonprofit, the aim is to go into communities and help those communities work together on their particular community issues. And right. so we'll hopefully be doing that and bringing in more and more communities as we go along. And, and then it'll be easier for people to find what's going on in their communities. Right. Yeah. And I guess part of what I had in mind was just, well, partly we're all getting used to, or at least I certainly am. I've certainly been on a lot of zoom meetings, but the, the benefits of, of certain kind of more face-to-face one-on-one meetings, um, right can be helpful and so um, just ways in which you would promote the the interaction um, or leave it up to those individual groups that are pursuing the idea I would imagine it be up to the individual groups since you can't be involved with everything um, in running well okay it. that's a good question because um, what we're going to be doing is having a catalyst in each community and so like around here it'll be me and so I'll try to keep people going i'll help people get on the the platform if they if they need help with that i'll help them with whatever sort of connection or education or information they need you know try to keep just try to keep it rolling and i like i said i don't expect this platform to replace that human interaction right now it's a really good thing because we all have to socially isolate so right. it's like a good time to bring it out and plus i think um it'll help when we're doing things here and we're seeing what other communities are doing, once we get more communities on there, we'll all be able to share ideas and, and ways of doing things and getting all these things rolling all over the place. So, so the, I, go ahead. Well, I mean, there's, I, I can help however is necessary, I guess. It's, um, sure, sure. It's, it's you, whatever is going to be needed by these groups. If they need my help, I'll, I'll help. But you're saying that, all over the Southern Illinois area, including Metro East, um, will be on the same platform. We'll have access to people doing things in Alton and in East St. Louis and so that we can get ideas from them and maybe say, well, I did it this way and it didn't work. And, you know, how did you do work on that? Right. That kind of thing. Okay. Now that sounds good. Hey, Amy, I have a question. Am I coming yeah. through? First of all, thank you for presenting interesting stuff. Um, I really like how you've taken climate economy because I kind of feel like that, you know, the reason why we're in the pickle that we're in, you know, with regard to the climate is because it's an economy climate. Yep. And like, I, I kind of have this, uh, I, as looking at all of this stuff over the course of years, I've developed a real kind of distaste for the word, the economy. Mm -hmm. and so I like that you're putting climate first and economy second. Well, we have and to think that. <laughs> Sorry, what? We have to take it back from the evil. Right on, yeah. I just think that's great. I just, uh, thank you for that. And uh, it's helpful for me also because my fear is that the economy, the not, not, not necessarily saying you would do this, but that the system as it is, what would like make the economy part, uh, you know, just continue to be, to overrule everything like and, and co-opt, uh, you know, uh, movements that, that are looking to to really get underneath this problem and yet still provide for human needs you know so i guess i don't know if i really have a question or not but uh i just wanted to share that i appreciate that you're you're helping me to break up my perceptions okay thank you for that and i just wanted to say that um what we're aiming to teach people is how to develop um climate ventures so this is again um not not your typical venture so we have we have a way of doing this where we have, you know how you have a business model canvas in the typical world with, you know, where it's all laid out and you have your customers and your, you know, your costs and this and that. Well, this is what we do is we try to teach people to envision the future they want. And so obviously 
that's a future that's good for the climate, good for the economy, good for humanity. And we, we figure out what is the target action we want people to take. So the, the focus of our business model canvas is not selling a product or service per se, it's getting people to take an action that's gonna reduce emissions or make more food for people or you know some sort of beneficial thing. And then we look at where we're at today and you know, then we kind of create a bridge to get from where we are today to where we wanna be so that we're not gonna hopefully keep all the problems that we've created in our current system and we're gonna be able to um, get to where we wanna be without attaching all those problems that we already have. So basically we're changing everything, <laughs> we're, we're making everything new and um, we just wanna, people just have to start thinking differently. And so that's, we're trying to help people with that transition because we think it's pretty overwhelming for most people. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate your answer, your yep. response, thank you. So, I mean, we're gonna be trying to help, um, you know, not, like I said, not just business people, but anybody who's got an idea about, about anything that they, they think will benefit someone or something in some way. So it, it's not about money at all. So, but it's about being productive, I guess. Okay. Hi, Amy, it's uh, Grant. I, I was, so i we made this Pacell Environmental Foundation uh, mm -hmm. profile on your, on the climate economy website. Yep. And w with that, agency we're focused on community community land management and land management education we're hoping to work with local schools to develop outdoor laboratories that can supplement uh, their diets with like gardens or perennial uh, nut and fruit bearing trees and I was curious if you have any advice for trying to draw in regional or national level resources to um, help to help fund or get these kind of initiatives going on the ground here uh well as you know we were going to be moving ahead with you guys and with the carbondale high school to do exactly what you were talking about um i don't know any specific resources off the top of my head, but I think this, the principal at, at Carmdale High School is really, he's really uh, supportive of these efforts. And they're gonna, they're gonna have some ideas for us. And I think as, as we go along, when you put that idea out there, there might be someone out there who, who has that information. And that's, that's why, that's another reason for this platform, because I, I don't have all the answers. And and I don't expect anyone to, to know everything. So the more we can put these issues out there and, and find out who knows what, and, and they can become um, our local ex experts for those kind of questions. So um, what I would suggest is that you put that idea on the platform. And as we get more and more people on the platform, we'll hopefully get an answer to that question. All right, thank you very much. And thanks for putting your stuff on there and signing up. Hey, Grant. Uh, Carbondale Hello. Spring has a good relationship with the Southern Illinois Community Foundation. And uh, I know they have a lot of resources available for uh, local food and uh, that, that sort of thing right now. I, uh, I suggest uh, uh, reaching out to them. Uh, that could be an interesting uh, spot to start. Uh, but I also Thank wanted you. to back yeah, absolutely. Also want to back up a little bit and uh, thank uh, Kurt and Sienna for the work on mutual aid. Uh, that's such an important, uh, important project. You know, I saw that JB thinks that Illinois is going to peak somewhere around May 15th. Uh, so the need for it might still be coming. Hopefully we don't have to use it, but I just wanted to thank you both for doing the work you're, you're doing. And uh, for you, Amy, uh, so like I find a lot of group collaboration uh, websites uh, kind of wanting when it comes to like usability. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was wondering if you've gone through the entire process using IdeaGist and have seen an end product. 
and uh, how does that how how does that work, or how do you think it worked? Well, I have not done it personally because you know this is this is all new, but um, I've taken myself through it just practicing, mm -hmm. and it's it's got its little glitchy areas, you know, uh, as any system does, but I think with with assistance and with with attention i think people can get through it and that's why i want to make sure we always have somebody in the community that's going to be on top of of helping people with that because i think no matter what the system is that we're going to try to use there's always going to be yep. issues for people so i mean my hope is that i mean i i know that this platform is being used in literally every country of the world already they just rolled out a huge 12,000 site um, rollout in India or in Pakistan um, at universities there. I mean, it's, it's, it's being used and it's, it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So um, we're doing it a little bit different. Like I said, it's, we're not full on incubation. Um, we're more on the lighter side of uh, just generating the ideas and, and helping people, I guess, to get used to that process of bringing those ideas to the front of their mind and understanding that those ideas might actually have value and that they should actually vocalize those ideas and, <laughs> and try to start working on those things. So I, I, I can't guarantee it's gonna be a, a perfect experience for everybody, but I hope over time that, you know, it'll be useful enough. Uh, well, I'm, I'm definitely going to check it out, and I, I think I'm going to sign up. And uh, thank you for willing to be what we call taskmaster on that yes. project. Uh, I'll be done. It's a difficult job to do. <laughs> uh, anyone else? All right. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>